Today, the pace of change is faster than ever before, which means that no matter how well your business is doing now, if you keep doing things the same way, soon it'll be outdated. To stay relevant, to prosper, you need to keep improving everything you do from internal communications to what you offer clients. You need to keep innovating. But how do you do it? As host of The New Inventors on ABC TV, I worked with hundreds and hundreds of innovators and inventors. And I'd like to share with you some really practical things that you can do to make your business more innovative and to make everyone who works in it more innovative. A lot of us spend so much time these days being busy, we don't have time to think. Now, the reason you are all employed is primarily, it might be because of a number of reasons, but the prime one was, at some point, someone said, now that person's clever. I like the way they think. I like the quality of their brain. Innovators and inventors aren't necessarily smarter than the rest of us, but there are three things that they do better than everyone else, and I wanna tell you what they are and how you can use them to improve your business. How many of you have days where you're so busy with, uh, with meetings, emails, traveling, uh, phone calls, getting back to people that you don't have time to think. How many of you have days like that? Quite often. <laughs> Someone put up two hands and a leg. If we don't give ourselves time to think, we're not going to have any ideas. If we don't have any ideas, we're not going to be able to think of ways to make things better, which means we're going to stay where we are. We're not going to innovate eventually in 10 years' time when things are going down the tubes. We're going to think, God, I wish I'd spent more time thinking 10 years ago. Of course you are busy and of course you have to make sure that today's business is done. But I would suggest to you if you spend 100% of your time focusing on today and none of it on focusing on how you can make your business better for tomorrow, you're not doing your job properly. I can tell you how innovators and inventors come up with new ideas about the man who turned on his kitchen tap and suddenly saw something that no one had ever seen before. And I can tell you how we can all learn to look at our business with fresh eyes, to see the opportunities for innovation and to take advantage of them. Someone said that um, the best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. And that's true. If you don't have a lot of ideas, you're not going to have a good idea. No one has good ideas all the time. That's impossible. Um, but you're not going to have any good ideas if you don't have any ideas. And you're not going to have any ideas if you don't give yourself time to think of ideas and make that a priority. I suggest that everyone... Uh, spends 10 or 15 minutes a day where you, you get unconnected, you leave your phone on your desk, you go for a walk with a bit of pen and paper and you just take with you a problem or an opportunity or something from your job or your business that you think may not be absolutely being done optimally now. You may think that that is something that that we could possibly do better. And just go away and think about it and brainstorm with yourself and see what you come up with. Your organisation has access to the most amazing resource in the universe, the brains of everyone who works in it. But how well do you use that resource? I can tell you how you can make your organisation a place where everyone is continually thinking up better ways of doing things, is eager to be innovative, and just as importantly, wants to share their ideas with management. So how do you create a culture that encourages innovation? The first thing is to make it clear it's part of the gig, to make it clear that people are employed. Remember we talked earlier about why you're employed because of the quality of thinking. To make it clear that one of your KPIs is doing, uh, is doing all the business that you need to do to keep the business afloat today. But another of them, is to come up with new and better ways of doing things that are going to make sure the business is in good nick in 2018. And I think it is uh, uh, legitimate, in fact wise, 
To, it, there's nothing wrong with saying to someone in a, in, a, in a review, you were great at doing all this and doing all that and the customers love you and you hit your targets and blah, 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 fantastic, well done today, fantastic. You haven't thought of one thing that is going to stop this business sliding into irrelevance in the next five years. You need to do better in that, uh, in that respect. It is part of your job. I don't like the idea of anonymous suggestion boxes sort of suggests a bit of an afterthought. I think everyone who manages people should send a clear message that to any one of their staff have an idea that you think might make this business better, please come and talk to me about it, please. That's more important than, than lots of other things. We I, I, Come, uh, the door is always open for that. Because if you listen to, tw to 30 ideas and 29 of them are no good and one is implemented and makes a substantial uh, difference to your business, makes it better, you could do a cost-benefit analysis of all that wasted time listening to the 29 ideas and the 30th that was good, and I bet you you would find it was time very, very well spent. If someone comes to you with a terrible idea, thank them. Thank them. Tell them you're really grateful because Next time, they'll come to you with quite possibly an even terrible idea, and the next time, it'll be an absolute shocker, and the time after that won't be much good, but the 11th time, they might come with a beauty, but they won't come if the second or fourth or seventh time they came with a terrible idea, you say, what are you wasting my time with that for? I'm busy, mate. I've got to get this thing out by the end of today. They won't come back. You know, every business's staff has ideas. Some businesses, I mean, no one is better placed, are they, than the people who do the work to think of better ways of doing the work. And yet a lot of companies outsource their thinking, don't they? And um, a lot of... And, and there is a difference between some companies that manage to harvest the ideas of their staff and some who don't. Innovation isn't what you do if you have time after you've done all your work. It is the work. One other story about my days as a, a criminal law lawyer. That first boss I was telling you about, taciturn would be putting it mildly. Uh, he, he dumped a folder, a big fat folder on my desk one day and he goes, read that. And I read it and he said, got any questions, come and ask me. So I read it and it's you know, a transcript of a, of a trial, we were going to represent the person. And I, I said, oh, I've got a question about the thing. And, he goes, yes. and I asked him the question. He goes, I'm not going to answer that. I said, why not? He goes, it's a stupid question. I said, why? And he said, I'm not going to answer that. Why? Well, you go and work it out. And I went, oh, <laughs> fell like crying. So I went back out and I thought and I thought. And I realised eventually that it was the question I'd asked him was a stupid question. And that instead of telling me why it was a stupid question, he made me go and think about it because he thought I needed to think about it, that it was my job to learn how to think things like that through. And I learned two things from that. How often it is we think we're working as hard as we can and we might be doing a lot of quantity, but we're not actually using our brains to our full capacity. How often we're just going through the motions, thinking we're really busy, but we're not actually thinking. We've got to not just do quantity, we've got to do quality, quality, and we've got to be on ourselves about that. Because if you work more, you can, you know, if you work, if you, if you think better, sometimes you don't have to work as hard. And also, the second thing I learned is that the solution to all our problems, almost all our problems, is between our ears. That if we apply ourselves, instead of running headfirst to the nearest you know, committee or whatever, if we think, if we have the discipline to, 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 to fail, to, th to, to be frustrated, to not be able to come up with things, but to keep thinking, keep coming up with big, bizarre ideas, don't judge them too soon, let them be big, big and crazy. You know, the first computer was a ridiculous idea when the first person had it. The first aeroplane was a ridiculous idea when the first person had it. If we have the courage to think of ridiculous ideas and then test them rigorously, then most of our problems, the solution to most of our problems is within our grasp. Thank you.